into the Cougar Tailgate, where BYU fandom lives. Here's your host, Lauren McClain. What's up, friends? Week four of college football, and the Bulls are coming to town. Nope, not those Bulls. The Bulls of the University of South Florida in Tampa. With all the many universities in Florida, we're bringing on publisher of Bulls247.com and USF student Will Turner to tell us what makes them stand apart from the rest. And there are so many amazing things about game day, but game day traffic ain't one of those. Plus, in honor of USF playing in Raymond James Stadium, the home of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, we'll discuss some of the best concessions in NFL stadiums around the country. And we can never talk enough about food. Wouldn't you agree, Junior? Oh, absolutely not. I love food. <laughs> <laughs> um, you and me both. Junior Phillips joining me today. I feel like you and I talk a lot about food when you come on, but it's what we do as Americans. You know, we watch sports and we eat. But Big. before we get to that, I, I want to point out that USF is just one of five collegiate teams in the country that play in NFL stadiums. So on the show, we've talked a lot about how cool it is when teams and BYU specifically get to play in NFL venues year in and year out. But these guys get to play in one every home game. How sweet would that be? Like, awesome, right? That'd be great. And then, obviously, you get more and more fans that can uh, that can come to the game. So that's pretty cool, too. To get people to come to the school, I'm sure the recruiting tactic is like, listen, <laughs> Tom Brady plays here. You know, <laughs> Tom Brady plays in the stadium. What more do you want? The GOAT. Yeah. I, I, I guarantee the, the coaches have to bring that up, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, you know, the facilities. We've got NFL facilities here. The locker rooms are NFL locker rooms and yep. stuff. So, hey, can't beat that. Absolutely. All right. Well, now we're going to talk about five foods that you have to try in certain NFL stadiums. And since we're talking about USF playing in Raymond James Stadium, let's start there. So according to Recipe.com, in Tampa Bay, they serve the donut burger. So it's glazed donuts replacing the buns for the burger. And there's also a fried egg in there and bacon. Would you try that? Oh, I'm not a big egg on a burger guy. That that seems too much. I like sweet and salty, but that may that may be a little bit too much. A donut like I don't they serve something kind of like that in McDonald's? Obviously, like a, a poor man's donut burger, but yeah, I'm pretty sure they they have that. The McGriddle is that the McGriddle, right? McGriddle, yeah. So yeah, maybe kind of like that. Oh. Well, yeah, I'm with you. Seems too much. All right, in Pittsburgh, they have the deli stack. So if you hate mustard, you're not going to like this one. It's French fries topped with corned beef, horseradish, pickles, and a Dijon cheese sauce. <laughs> I'd be willing what? to try that. I'd try that. A little weird. You'd try but it. Would, I'd try would you that. enjoy it? Eh, probably. I think some of these same. They just try and come up with things that are unique. Yeah. Sets them apart. Because I'm like, why would you combine half the things that you're combining? But but sure. And people eat it. That's why. That's people why they love do it. it. That's right. All right. In Philadelphia, they have the slim chicken, uh, but there's nothing slim about it. The chicken is coated with frosted flakes cereal when fried. And cheddar cheese and bacon are also in there. As the chicken sandwich is inside of a sliced apple fritter. Junior. Oh, I'm my sorry. gosh. So you, can you believe that? That's that, called the slim chicken in the Philadelphia. The slim chicken? Yeah, that's that's a little – that's way too much for me. I don't frosted think I could do flakes, that. <laughs> frosted flakes over coating the chicken and inside a sliced apple fritter. Come on, Philadelphia. Just kidding. I, I can't even knock any of these until I tried it. It's probably delicious. Sounds very strange. All right, in New York, the home of the Mets, uh, they have the kitchen sink – Sandwich and the Giants, I guess. Kitchen sink sandwich. It sounds really terrible. But there's lots of meat in the sandwich with hot dogs, chicken sausage, and sweet beef sausage. The toppings are peppers, onions, and fried potatoes. That sounds like it might be more up your alley. That, right? Yeah, I like that one. That one's not too bad. Can you handle a bunch of different types of meat like sure. that? Sure. Oh, yeah. No, that's that's the way to go. I really? think that would be. That doesn't it, bother you. No, no. I think that that one, that one sounds pretty good. I think when you start mixing some of the sweet. With that is where it gets kind of weird, but which no. is what most of these these places are doing. And and what's interesting is a lot of them are like breakfast foods, yeah, you know, all mixed together. Which it's breakfast foods mixed with like hot dogs and hamburgers. So weird. it's a little weird. But everybody go try them out. All right, in Minnesota they have the purple grip. 
Speaking of breakfast, it's a pancake with purple coloring folded with bacon, sausage, tater tots, gravy, which are each stuffed inside of the pancake. Wow. That's like oh. taking a, a huge breakfast, just throwing it in a blender and eating it. <laughs> <laughs> which is what I have to do for my baby. So so there you go. So, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I should go to Minnesota. You should go to Minnesota. So what makes that unique is obviously the the pancake is colored purple, which, yeah. is, which is cool. Yeah. I don't know. The Sometimes colors can throw me off on stuff like that. So, But <laughs> I'm sure it's fine. Really? Did your mom growing up, did she not like dye your pancakes no. and stuff for different no. holidays? No. Nope. It's not your thing, huh? No. It's, it's always a little weird to me. How do you tell if it's gone bad, if it's purple or green? <laughs> Or yellow. Yeah, you don't. Or yellow. I guess that, that's a really good point. You don't. Well, now that we've talked about gaining weight on extremely unhealthy food, let's talk about how to burn it off. So it can be nightmare, Junior, traveling to the stadium on game day. So I asked all of you, the fans, about what your creative way is to get to the game is to avoid traffic. But before we get to those, Junior, how do you get to the game or any game without pulling your hair out? I know you got a good story. I'm yeah. Most of the time, I'm the guy who likes to get there super early to avoid it. But one time, I had the opportunity. I was going to Boston uh, for something, and we decided to go see a Red Sox game. And we landed and had to go straight from the airport. And I can remember driving, and everyone I was with, no one had been there before, so we had no idea where to go. So we uh, we called a buddy who had been there before and knew the stadium, and he goes, you know, I think there's parking at a, the Sitco station by there. So we said, okay. So we, I put it in my phone and we're coming off the freeway and I see it and I pull in. It was 60 bucks to park there. And it was literally just your average gas station and they stacked cars in there. And somehow we got lucky. We were like on the very back and the two cars ahead of us had moved out by the time we left. So we were able to get out of there pretty quick. But uh, 60 bucks. 60 bucks. To park at a gas station. And you know that guy's like, that's right. That's uh-huh. right. And then, you know, they <laughs> they stacked they stacked probably 20 to 30 cars in there. So, yeah. They made quite a bit well, of money. You said you got free. You said you got free tickets. We though. got free so tickets. Get, right? So we 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 kind of split that between us and so 20 bucks you know, to get to go to a Red Sox game is not bad. Yeah, not bad at all. Heck yeah. And that guy was making bank at the gas station. Good for him. Yeah. Good for him for uh, for taking advantage. Well, uh, my dad used to drive us to the games, and I swear he pulled like 11 illegal moves every time. <laughs> and he whistled the entire time as if it was no big deal. He's like, Whoosh. you know, like doing all these <laughs> driving in the shoulder. Oh, my gosh. So I would literally hide my face in the back seat, And then uh, so that was embarrassing. But then he and my mom switched to driving a scooter, uh, which is smart. But I'm pretty sure he drove in people's front yards to get there. Wow. He, oh, man. Yep. Yeah, that's the hard thing is is you I I always go early because I figure you can go hang out by the tailgate or you can you know you can find at BYU they've got Cougar Canyon if you could beat the masses get there a little early and get a decent spot but yeah that's that's how I do it. Well, that a lot of people on Twitter agreed with you. Some of their responses were so Darnell Dixon, uh, you know Darnell, right? I do, yeah. Love Darnell. He's he great. said he would ride his he said he was ride his bike to the game back in the day. Really smart. Yeah. Which is really smart. We're talking about all this food. You know that BYU has uh, cougar tails. You burn a few calories on your way to the game, avoid the traffic, and then eat your little heart out once you get to the game. I think that's really smart. I like Good job, it. Darnell. Yeah. Uh Doug Keith said he moved to the apartment complex across the street. And five years of never dealing with traffic and going to bed before some people found their cars. Yeah. So just well, move across you know. the street. Well, that's all you got to do. Just uproot your family and go. <laughs> it's fine. Kids, kids, we're, we're uh, pack up the house. We're moving. We're moving it's closer really to the stadium. We're, we're, right across, we're within walking distance to the stadium. There are some fans, Junior, that are that crazy. Oh, yeah, definitely. Like, I could see some some doing that. I um, going right. to Lambo. We went to Lambo, and we we uh-huh. had a buddy. I had a buddy who was from Green Bay. He grew up in Green Bay. He gave me the name of one of his high school friends, and we parked in his front yard <laughs> and walked like, over. Not even like in the driveway in his. No, yard. no, no. It was on the grass. He was in the driveway, <laughs> and he would sell because you know Green Bay in the winter. Um, yes. 
there, your yard's dead anyway. So he would <laughs> sell parking spaces in his front yard and could make enough to pay for season tickets every year. Oh, my gosh. See? Uproot your family, Junior, and move across Uproot from your the family. Stadium. Move like a block from the stadium. You'll be just fine. <laughs> Source of income, especially if it's an NFL stadium or some you know big professional team. Then really, you you wouldn't have to who, work. Who needs landscaping? Just turn your just turn your yard into a uh, parking lot. <laughs> That's right. There's got to be some rules and regulations against that, but we won't go into that. All right, a handful agreed with you. They said they would they leave early to tailgate. Yes, this is the correct answer uh, because I think more people at BYU need to start tailgating. I want that to become a huge thing like it is at other schools because it's so much fun. It creates such a fun culture and and all of that. I love it. Yeah, that's the thing. Like going on the road, you would see that. And I know that they're trying to create that atmosphere with Cougar Canyon, which is a lot of fun. We've got a lot of people show up to that, which is really cool. And uh, one said he arrives at 7 a.m. So I asked him what he did for 13 hours. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> you're there at 7 a.m., to avoid traffic, and then you're hanging out because BYU's games don't start till you know eight fifteen, eight thirty, Mountain Time. But he said he he likes to chat with people. He'll go to a bookstore and he watches football and eats food. The the more he talked about, it, I'm like, that's actually really genius. That sounds really great. That's hey, if you got a whole day, just you can waste it doing that. That's right. Uh, Chris Dayton says he cruises on his Vespa. Nice. So basically like my dad in a scooter. Uh, Kelly said her parents live within walking distance, so she parks at their house. Yes, that's kind of like what you said. It's if you can find any relative to use on game day, use them, you know, park yeah. at their house. Yeah, so you don't have to walk as far and, and uh, avoid traffic at the end as well. Hmm. All right, Ken Foodie said, it's cake. Just look at Google Maps before you go and stick to the back streets. He said he's never had a problem getting there and never has a problem finding a parking spot anywhere from one to four blocks away at the absolute most. So he looks wow. at Google Maps and says, where's everybody else going? I'm going to go the, maps. the opposite way. Stay off University <laughs> Parkway. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Oh, my gosh. Well, good luck to everyone getting to the game tonight. Be safe because there are people like my dad out there. All right, up next, Bulls insider Will Turner joins me to discuss why he hopes things will get weird tonight for his team. This is Cougar Tailgate. Welcome back to Cougar Tailgate. I'm Lauren McLean. The University of South Florida has an enrollment of almost 50,000 students and their football team plays in Raymond James Stadium the home of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And joining me now is publisher for Bulls247.com, talking all things USF, Will Turner. Thanks for coming on with me, Will. Yeah, appreciate you having me, Lauren. All right, so so awesome that the Bulls get to play in Tom Brady's house for every game. Earlier in the show, we were talking about some of the best things to eat in NFL stadiums, and the donut burger came up as one of the things to eat in Tampa Bay. Have you tried it, and is it any good? So I haven't had the Raymond James version of it because – Typically being up in the in the box, we have our press box food, but I so I haven't had the Raymond James. However, uh there is a local spot. Um there's one down there's one in South Tampa and there's one in a suburb called Riverview of a place called Dats. D A T Z. And Dats okay. is 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 famous for their donut burger. And I have and I can't say I've had it twice. And uh it wow. is it, it is decadent. Uh, it's 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 just <laughs> as you might expect. Two donuts as the top and bottom bun, with uh, typically how they do it's with romaine lettuce or something of that nature. A burger, oh just gosh. like you'd, you'd order it at any other restaurant. You could get it cooked however you want, and I mean, shoot, it's a it's a great uh, it's a great mix of sweet and savory. It's almost it's it's pretty much two meals every time you do it, but. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's it's good. It's it, it's unique, uh, and and the donuts are, are a real nice aspect to get uh, you know away from a traditional bun. But definitely an adventure for your taste buds and some clogged arteries. But sounds like it's worth it. So that that's like a, a Tampa tradition is the donut burger. I don't know if I call it a tradition, but yeah, it's definitely something that's that's kind of popped up here. That same that same restaurant I mentioned um, has uh, a 
I think they're called mac and cheese bites, uh, a mac and cheese burger, or something like that, where the the top and bun, uh, top and bottom buns are uh, mac and cheese bites. Uh, wow. They're crusted um, with uh, like panko breading or whatnot, and that was actually, I think, featured on Good Morning America at one point. So that's probably well, more their specialty. But the donut, yeah, but the donut burger is kind of in that same ballpark. That sound, the mac and cheese sounds delicious. All right. Well, you do a podcast as well, and you and your co-host were talking about how weird college football is, and you're hoping things get weird in Provo Saturday night. Knowing what you do about your team, how weird are things going to have to get, would you say? Uh, they're going to have to get very weird, I think. You know, USF <laughs> is going to have to do some 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 different things. They're going to have to create turnovers, uh, maybe a trick play here too. They try to do a trick play against uh, Florida in week two, a uh, little double pass uh, from I'm trying to remember who it was. Cade Fortin, who was a starting quarterback. It was a jet sweep to uh, Xavier Weaver, who tried to throw it downfield to, to Kelly Joyner uh, running back for USF and weren't able to uh, complete the play. And uh, if they completed, it's a seven, seven game at that point and things could have gotten weird against Florida, but you know, for sure. It's, it's, it's interesting just kind of how college football has been this year. It's kind of reminding me a little bit of 2007, uh, you know, when that was weird, when USF ended up as the number two team in the country at one point back, back in 2007, Boston college had some time at the top, like just teams you never would have expected. Um, Mm -hmm. but yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna have to get weird. There's gonna have to be some turnovers, maybe some weird plays, a punt return, a kickoff return for a touchdown, uh, something just out of the ordinary that you wouldn't see. Cause, uh, you know, maybe, uh, maybe bulls after dark gets a little crazy. This will be the, the, <laughs> uh, latest kickoff in program history mm-hmm. at 10, 15 PM. Wow. So who knows, maybe they could set a new precedent. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll have to find out. Well, I don't know if you're familiar with Provo will, but it, things can definitely get weird here. Uh, have you ever been to Provo? I have not the, it, it's funny. I uh, I had never been west of Texas uh, prior to oh, wow. this summer, and then three of my last four trips uh, have or, or, are going to be out uh, out west of Texas. So Seattle, uh, I did that in July. I did Southern California in August for another site that I work for, and then Provo will be the third third trip. So, but no, I haven't been to Utah. I've, I, I had a layover in Denver. That's probably the closest I'm going to, uh, I got to it, but um, I, I'm excited for it. I'm excited for the mountains, especially because I know, uh, I know it's, it's just plain gorgeous out there. Yes. Well, well, welcome to the Wasatch front. Uh, you told me earlier that 90 degrees in Florida right yeah. now. Is that right? It's, it's rough. <laughs> it's rough. Oh my goodness. It's, well, it's you, really yeah, you're, rough. You wear it, bring your coat, bring your coat. I know you probably don't have one, but you're going to have to buy one when you come here. Uh, so with so many universities and teams in Florida, what do you, what would you say sets USF apart? What sets USF apart? Well, I, I think it's, I think it's kind of interesting. Um, obviously the NFL stadium is something that, you know, a lot of universities don't have a lot of, I don't think any other university in Florida plays in a, in an NFL stadium. Um, you know, most of them have it on campus. So that creates a little bit of an interesting dynamic. Um, trying to think what else, what else sets USF apart? Um, you know, just really, I think the fans are a little bit of a different breed, right? There's a lot of it. There's a lot of fans that, you know, in, in Tampa that maybe did their undergrad at USF or, you know, maybe, and maybe went up to Tallahassee to go to Florida state for their grad program or UF or something of that nature or vice versa. They did their undergrad at Florida state and did a grad program at USF. So there's a lot of Gator bulls or Seminole bulls or, or cane bulls for Miami or something like that. There's a lot of, there's a lot of, of mixing and matching with allegiances. I know a couple uh, UF Fans that are also Florida fans that were really conflicted when Florida came to town uh, saw a lot of <laughs> USF hats and Florida jerseys. Um, so I think <laughs> it's kind of a little bit of a melting pot, um, you know, in terms of in terms of Tampa. I, I don't necessarily consider Tampa as a, as a traditional college media uh, or traditional college town, um, 
just because of, of the big three of Florida's influence. But, you know, I think, I think just kind of the, the mixing and matching of different fan bases, maybe outside of USF that, you know, but they all have the, the fact that they went to USF in common and, um, you know, definitely the, the NFL stadium aspects kind of, kind of sets them apart from, from some of the different universities within the, within the Sunshine State. Oh yeah, that would be sweet. So with, with kind of the melting pot of fans, how avid are they? Are they just kind of these, you know, like, I don't know when they're, you said back in 2007 and they're number two in the country, it's like, bro, come out of the woodworks fans, or are there some avid fans, Bulls fan base? Yeah. So there's, there, there are, I mean, there, there are some, there are some really, really avid fans for sure. Without a doubt. Um, you know, front, front row at any USF Raymond J- game at Raymond James uh, in the student section, you see the beef studs and babes and, and those, are you know the students that that'll that'll get there early um when i was a freshman at usf in 2017 um you know i i I knew a lot of those folks they you know get all kinds of painted up and go stand in the front row of the student section they tailgate all day um you know we would get down there when i was a freshman uh we'd get down there uh probably as soon as the lots open we'd tailgate and we we would uh get down to the front row uh, I was friends with a lot of folks in the student bulls, uh, student bulls club that would end up getting those front row seats. So I was front row pretty much for most of the season, most of the games at Raymond James. So, um, you know, that was fun. Uh, I think their student section ultimately holds about 12,000 and that get that gets pretty packed. It was packed against wow. Florida A&M last week at one point. Um, so it's, it's one of the largest in the nation uh, when it's full, obviously a 50,000 seat or a 50,000, uh, enrollment, 50,000 plus enrollments, pretty, pretty large, obviously. But, you know, you mentioned about, you know, we talk about the 2007 years and I mean, shoot there, the, the games of USF lore, right. Beating West Virginia at home in a big East game, uh, back, back when the big East was, was still around for football. And those fans <laughs> absolutely just packed the house 60, 60,000 strong. The upper deck was packed, mm. sold out the loudest you've ever heard it. Um, you know, it felt like the bucks in the super bowl back, you know, uh, <laughs> it, or, it, you know, or if they were in a big playoff game, it was that kind of environment, you know, and, and that was kind of the 2006 through the 2009 years, you know, a lot of sold out games at that point. Uh, it's been tough for USF to to fill those out quite a bit, but typically they will they will get close to a sellout or get around that point when one of the in-state powers come comes in, and mm-hmm. obviously a lot of the a lot of the fans uh, travel from Tallahassee or, or Gainesville, or in the case of UCF, they'll travel right down from Orlando for the War on I four every year. Um, that that's at Raymond James, and and those games get pretty packed. Uh, and those games are, are 60,000, if not more Florida state was, was like that back in 2016. And then, um, the Florida game was sold out in, uh, in week two. Uh, I think they, they think final attendance was like 64,000, which I, I think it ended up being over capacity of what Raymond James officially holds. So hmm. yeah, there's, there's some avid fans, uh, obviously winning helps. <laughs> And uh, yes. with USF kind of being in, in a down spot the last couple of seasons, uh, there's not as many, but not as many fans that, that show up. But uh, there's there's quite a few that I know that, that come out strong and tailgate every every Saturday that they're at Raymond James Stadium and go to the bars uh, around Tampa for, for the games and, and love their USF Bulls. Well, here's to hoping there's more of the 2006, 2009 years for you guys moving forward. Uh, what would you say is your favorite tradition that happens on game day in Tampa? Um, favorite tradition. Let's see. I think probably, um, I love the, so I, so I like the stampede, which the stampede is basically, uh, pretty similar. I think, you know, every, every school typically has it where, um, it's the, it's the players walk to the stadium. And it's the one, and and I recently just actually again for the Florida A&M game, I recently just took it in for the first time as a photographer, and and walked down um, to the Stampede and, and and walked around and got a chance to talk to some folks and then watched when the team walked into to the stadium, and got off the buses. Basically, 
the team pulls up to the to the south end of Raymond James Stadium. There's a, a road called Tampa Bay Boulevard, and the team two team buses will pull up, and the coaches and players will come will come through a line of cheerleaders with the band blaring right behind them, um, right along a section called Bulls Bay, which is uh, kind of a a, a a mock of what the Bucks do. The Bucks Beach is, is what it's called on Sundays, but on Saturday it's Bulls Bay, and <laughs> they'll 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 rock it out i mean they'll have fans all over the place it's it's loud it's proud and it's kind of the real cool interaction uh between the fans and and players and then probably my second favorite second favorite is after wins um you know or even after losses the fans will or the the fans will get a chance to 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 slap slap hands with the with the players as they walk around raymond james stadium and they walk around the outside um or walk around the inside or the outside of the field rather and um, slap hands with, with the, with, with kids and with, um, with Hmm. parents and alumni. And and it's really cool what they do. Uh, You know, they'll even do it on the road every now and again, if there's a large USF contingency, Uh, they did it at Hmm. Georgia tech two years ago in Atlanta. So it's been uh, that those are probably my two favorite. Um, The, the one I just mentioned about them after the game is probably the, probably my most long-standing one that I, that I enjoy, but you know, the, the stampede is, is before the game is quickly becoming one of my favorites. I love that. Honestly, there is nothing like college football. Will Turner insider for the USF bulls. Thank you so much for coming on and taking the time with me today. I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Appreciate you having me on. Excited to, to get out to, to Provo and experience game day. It's uh, with, uh, with Cougar nation. And that does it for us today. Thanks again to Will Turner and Junior Phillips for coming on the show with me. You can join the Cougar Tailgate virtually, of course, every Saturday at noon Mountain Time or download, rate, and review our podcast on Apple, TuneIn, Stitcher, Spotify, or on BYUradio.org. It's game day, baby. This is Cougar Tailgate.